This morning, we learned that we will be condemned if we follow or preach a different gospel. It is clearly recorded in the Bible, and we confirm that we cannot go to heaven if we do this. Regarding Satan's work of hindering the Passover, which is God's truth of life, God let us know through the words written in 1 John chapter 5 that the whole world is under the control of the evil one, Satan. To control the whole world, Satan changed God's set times and destroyed the laws of God. In this way, Satan made the whole world unknowingly worship him. If some parts of God's law still continue to be kept, can Satan have complete control of the entire world? He cannot control it according to his own way. Since Satan is in the place of speaking against God, he cannot do anything if God's laws and commands exist. That is why he keeps making rules similar to God's laws. A similar incident happened in the time of King Jeroboam. After King Solomon died, the nation of Israel, which originally existed as one nation, was divided into two kingdoms. The northern region was governed by King Jeroboam, and the southern region was governed by King Rehoboam, son of King Solomon. However, in order to keep the feasts or worship God, the people of northern Israel had to travel to Jerusalem, which was the capital city of Judah in the south. Since they needed to offer sacrifices at the temple in Jerusalem, King Jeroboam was very anxious, thinking, if these people keep going to Jerusalem, they will revert to the house of David, take my throne through rebellion, and eventually kill me. Therefore, he made two golden calves in northern Israel and said to his people, you do not have to go through all the trouble of traveling to southern Judah. Just keep worship here. He put one golden calf in Bethel and the other in Dan. Then he said to them, Can you not keep worship, pray, and serve God here? King Jeroboam was worried that his people would be drawn toward Rehoboam, who was the king of southern Judah at that time. So he devised this scheme to prevent them from going to the temple. King Jeroboam had no intention of worshiping God in a holy manner. Therefore, from that time on, northern Israel committed idolatry against God. By using the same tactics, Satan abolished the feasts of God, such as the Sabbath, the Passover, and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Instead, he deviously introduced a different way of worship, which led people to worship the sun god. Let us turn to 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 25. It says, Then Jeroboam fortified Shechem in the hill country of Ephraim and lived there. From there, he went out and built up Peniel. Here, Jeroboam was the king of northern Israel, right? Then Jeroboam fortified Shechem in the hill country of Ephraim and lived there. From there, he went out and built up Peniel. Jeroboam thought to himself, The kingdom will now likely revert to the house of David. If these people go up to offer sacrifices at the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem, they will again give their allegiance to their lord, Rehoboam, king of Judah. They will kill me and return to King Rehoboam. After seeking advice, the king made two golden calves. He said to the people, It is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Here are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of Egypt. One he set up in Bethel, and the other in Dan. And this thing became a sin. The people went even as far as Dan to worship the one there. Jeroboam built shrines on high places and appointed priests from all sorts of people, even though they were not Levites. He instituted a festival on the 15th day of the 8th month, like the festival. What was the festival like? It was like God's festival, held in Judah and offered sacrifices on the altar. This he did in Bethel, sacrificing to the calves he had made. And at Bethel he also installed priests at the high places he had made. On the 15th day of the 8th month, a month of his own choosing, he offered sacrifices on the altar he had built at Bethel. So he instituted the festival for the Israelites and went up to the altar to make offerings. In this way, King Jeroboam led his people to turn away from God. 
When we look at the history, didn't the Israelites receive God's wrath because they worshipped a golden calf while they were wandering in the desert? However, since Jeroboam was afraid of losing his throne, he devised a plan to prevent his people from going to Jerusalem, thinking, I don't care about people's faith. Whether or not they receive God's blessing is not an urgent concern for me right now. This incident in the history of Israel was recorded in the Bible as a lesson for us. In the same way, to prevent us from keeping the Passover, Satan created the most popular worldwide festival called Christmas to replace the Passover. Originally, December 25th was the birthday of the sun god. However, he changed the name of the birthday of the sun god into Christmas, which is now regarded as the birthday of Jesus. When you study the history of Christianity, you will learn that Christmas is not the birthday of Jesus. This is an obvious fact. Nevertheless, people still insist that December 25th is the birthday of Jesus Christ, don't they? A similar incident was recorded in 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 25. I'm reminding you of this chapter and verse so that you will not forget it. Jeroboam made the two golden calves, one in Bethel and the other in Dan. He also instituted the festival of his own choosing that was similar to the Feast of God. When you read this history recorded in 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 25, it is very similar to what is happening right now. If you ask God who made this change, he will reply, I'm not the one who did this, but it was an enemy who did this. Regarding this matter, God clearly teaches us through the prophecy written in the book of Daniel, the words written in 1 John chapter 5, and the parable of the weeds written in Matthew chapter 13. In the parable of the weeds, Jesus said an enemy did this. Through the words of God written in the Bible, let us realize how important the Passover is and preach the Passover clearly to our neighbors and all people around us. I conclude today's sermon. Thank you.